Little mateys, time to get weighed. Here you go, just sit in there for a minute. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim is trying to save two tiny undernourished bush stone curlew. Who's first? Okay, you. I'll tear that back to zero. Sit down, matey. 19 grams. Every day going forward, I want them to be heavier than the previous day. The fragile newborns have to be hand reared because their parents aren't feeding them. Come here, mate. He thinks I'm mum already. That's good. When I have a look at both of them, what I feel for is once they've had a good feed, their belly puffs out and it's full, it's full of food. But on these two, I can't feel much at all and that means they've absorbed the rest of their yolk sac. So what I've done is the right thing. All right, now he's 24 grams. The big test now is to see if Tim can coax the vulnerable chicks to eat. My finger is gonna be mum or dad's beak. And if they took some feed right now, I would be the happiest man on earth. I'm gonna try a cricket. Here we go, look at the interest. Look at this. Almost, mate. Whoop. Close. Yes, that's brilliant. I don't know what happens in the aviary with mum and dad, but the food we offer, it's just not right for the parents, but it's right for the chicks. I mean, that's brilliant. Let's go for number two. Here we go. You can do it. Yes. That's the best thing I could have hoped for because it's tough taking them from mum and dad. I know I can get them to eat, but when they do it, hey mate, I'm here. When they do it, it makes it all worthwhile. I know they're gonna be all right. One more bit, wow. All right, little guys. See you in an hour, you're coming home with me. Lima. Lima, Is yeah. Is true? Yeah, we've got a lima here which is, uh, needs a bit of attention on her teeth. Okay. Chris's patient is a 20-year-old black and white ruffed lemur, which has lived at the zoo for six months. We don't get a lot of lemurs rolling up to the clinic in Bondi, so seeing lemurs is a rare event for me. So, Chris, this is uh, Stephanie and her partner, Sahala. OK. And this is their keeper, Danielle. Hi, nice to meet you. Hey, how are you going? So, I've got a zoo to run, mate. I'm off, leaving Danny's capable hands. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, a sore tooth. Yeah, so a couple of months after Stephanie arrived here, I started to notice that her tooth was getting a little bit brown, just from what you could see hanging out of her mouth. Yeah. Um, since then, it has developed a bit more. Her entire tooth appears to be brown. Any chance of actually having a look at it up close? Well, she does let me look. Okay. Hopefully, she's in a good mood with us today, so she'll let us have a little look. Um, we'll have to see what she says when we go in there, I guess. The concern is that the tooth is badly infected. If Stephanie is in pain, it'll be hard for Chris to get close enough to treat her. Lemurs are highly temperamental. They can be aggressive. They decide who they like, and they tend to stick with that opinion. If this lemur doesn't like me, this isn't going to go well. Two other dogs are already being treated in the hospital's intensive care unit fighting for their lives after tick bites. Hey, hi. Hey, what's going on? Mummy came home and she thinks I've had a little tick above my left eye, but she's oh. not sure. Emergency vet Dr Lisa Chimes could now be dealing with a third tick bite victim. All right, let me just have a look. We're right in the middle of tick season, so every second case that I'm seeing is a patient with a tick. We've got two patients on ventilators because their tick paralysis has got so bad that it's paralysed their breathing muscles. Okay. Bella's come in here because she's got a swelling around her eye. Her owner left her home this morning. She's come back home and now the eye has suddenly swelled up. Her little heart is racing. <laughs> so far she's breathing normally, but that could change quickly. She doesn't know what's going on. Bella's in a bit of distress and she needs it sorted out. If she does have a tick, Lisa needs to find it, identify it, and take action before Bella goes downhill. Oh, you are terrified, honey. What have you done? Tracy and Ray tell me that Angus has a friend called Pet Pet. He is the pet's pet, and Angus carries him around. They are normally as close as can be. But today, the relationship was under a little bit of strain because Angus decided to eat his best mate. 
Yeah, we're just concerned that uh, if he does have a bowel blockage that he won't be able to get his uh, epileptic medication. Turns out Angus also suffers from severe epilepsy and needs to be medicated twice a day to control his seizures. Do you form at seven o'clock? Well, we better get you sorted before seven o'clock tonight, huh, bud? What do you think? Angus's owners are really worried about him missing his seizure medications, but in reality, I'm more worried about the toy being stuck there. We can always give him his anti-seizure medications by injection, but if he's got a toy stuck in his guts, we're gonna have to pull it out with an endoscopy or even surgery. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Steve and Linda have arrived with three six-week-old kittens. Are you comfortable? Mm. They found the tiny strays living in their garage. Although the couple have done their best to care for the vulnerable babies, the kittens have suddenly become sick. The long-haired kitten, she ended up like losing her actual balance and started throwing up. She got the runs a little bit. I am worried about her because, like being so small, they can go downhill really fast. Hi. Hello. I'm G'day. Lisa. G'day. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, Steve and uh, Linda. Nice to meet you both. And who's this? This is a little stray kitten. Um, there actually was five of them. We lost two. Okay. But and the other how ones are okay. old are they now? They're around about uh, six weeks old now. Okay, all yeah. right. Look, we don't actually know what's causing the problem with these kittens. The most important thing that I can do is actually give them a full medical, make sure that they haven't got any life-threatening problems that we need to deal with straight away. All right, let me take a look at them. So mm. pop him down. He's a little guy. Has he got a name? No. Not no, yet? No, yet. <laughs> not what they are. Miles because we're not quite sure, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, honey. Oh, it's a little boy. Little boy, okay. Let's just have a listen. Just going to check if he's got a heart murmur. Okay. How's that sound? He does have a little heart murmur. Yeah. And he's obviously had some vomiting and, and yeah. diarrhea, so he's definitely got something going on with his gastrointestinal tract. And being this age, the most common thing is something infectious, the fact that the others haven't seemed quite right. Yeah. Um, if he hasn't been wormed, we could be dealing with some sort of parasite yes. like worms. Um, the other thing that might be happening is just simple malnourishment. So if their mum's not a great yeah. feeder, they're not going to thrive. I think if you would have waited a few more hours, he would have come in here probably collapsed. Mm. Um, that's how quickly things can yeah. change. Linda and Steve have done an amazing job. The, these kittens aren't even technically theirs, and they're spending their own money to fix them, and these kittens are very, very lucky to have found them. Another little boy. Another boy. There you go. <laughs> He's also not 100%, not yeah. I think. Yeah, she's a lot smaller than... Yeah. Sometimes you just worry about them as well because they're also so small. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me take a look at the third okay. one. Okay. Yeah, he's in much better condition yeah. than the other little guy, hey? Yeah, your belly is a lot fuller than the yeah. others. Mm. You've been stealing all the food, hey? <laughs> yep, got a girl. So the lady of the bunch has been stealing all the food. <laughs> okay. So options are... Um, the two little boys that seem quiet and are not eating well, um, the best possible thing yeah. we could do for them is probably putting them on a drip. The, yeah. the other thing is that they all are looking pale and it probably yeah. would be a good idea to take a little blood sample and just check um, how anemic they are. Yeah. Absolutely. This is Monty. Oh, Monty, hello. I don't really know how to hold a goat. Matt has brought Monty, a miniature goat, into the Bondi clinic for a routine consultation with Chris. So, do you mean, can we steal him? <laughs> I've brought Monty in today because when I bought him, he had a registration tag through his ear. So, I thought it was time to come in and get him chipped. So, he's all registered. Is that your dad? Nah. <laughs> But Monty is finding it hard to make it past reception. What is going on out here? Of course. 
This yours? Yeah. How you going? I'm yeah. Chris. G'day Chris, Matt. Hey Matt. You're, You're a very brave man it to bring... Yeah, it's, it's a present. It's not yours. No, it Watch is. this one here. <laughs> You straight and take him over, like. Not coming home, I'm already telling you now. Come on. Step away from the goat, let's go. I can't pass you up. Come on. <laughs> you know, in here, some of us have to keep their cool and maintain a focus because we're working. But all the same, it's hard to deny that Monty is a cute kid. Uh, okay, look, you've got to say goodbye at some stage. Okay, I'll show you. Are you putting time, Jackson? Thank you. So, aside from driving the nurses crazy, what's the reason he's here today? I've brought him in basically so I can get him chipped and just in the last couple of days I've just noticed him scratching away at himself a little more. Okay. Um, so I thought, look, while we're here, mm. get that checked out as well. Matt was always due to bring in Monty for a microchipping, but in the last few days he's really noticed that he started scratching. And even here right now, he just goes a few seconds before he can't help but lift that hoof through and scratch away. That's not entirely normal. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.